Hello everybody, my name is Soul, and welcome to YouTube on the Rise. And today is our first ever episode of Creator on the Rise, and I don't know who better to kick off this series than the very infamous and polarizing figure that is Max Landis. Going by his username up to my knees, the link to his channel is in the description, Max Landis, although a YouTuber with over a hundred thousand subscribers, he primarily doesn't even do YouTube. Within the entertainment sphere, he is primarily a screenwriter. His films that he's written include Chronicle, Me, Him, Her, Mr. Right, Victor Frankenstein, and American Ultra. So out of that group of movies, I've seen all of them. The one exception being American Ultra, because nobody has seen American Ultra. On top of this, Max has a lot of side projects. For instance, he wrote a comic book, that being Superman American Alien, which I read for the sake of doing this video. And yes, I'm that pathetic that I read my first comic book just because a YouTuber wrote it. And you can find Max in a bunch of other places. He works for a lot of TV, and he is all over YouTube. I mean, for these videos, I try to watch the creator's entire backlog. And so I watched every video that I saw that had his name in it. And this included his channel made up of hundreds of videos. I watched his big analysis videos. I watched the plethora of shitpost home videos he had. The only video I did not watch was the one that was about him getting smacked in the face 31 times. For whatever reason, this video was blocked in my country, so... Thanks, YouTube! I'm just trying to make my YouTube analysis videos on YouTubers, and you won't even let me watch YouTube so I can make YouTube. God damn you, YouTube! Anyway, there's a lot of videos he appears in, mostly podcasts and interviews, you know, that kind of stuff. And the channels you can find those videos on are Red Letter Media, a great interview he had on the ETC show, Schmozno, Kinda Funny, Geek and Sundry, Trailers from Hell, New York Film Academy, and, and probably more. I listened to a lot of hours of podcasts and interviews. I, I think I got the idea. He's, he's out there. And Max even finds time to do some directing stuff. He directed his movie, Me, Him, Her. He directed an Ariana Grande video one time. And he directed this. I'm not exactly sure what that is. So yeah, he does a lot of stuff. He does pretty much everything except for like acting well unless unless you count cameos in your dad's movies if that counts then he is an amazing actor some people can be so inconsiderate so max's channel has a lot of weird stuff from his first video which is dog penis bite dog penis bite this is the first video I had to watch as I went through this guy's catalog. And immediately I thought this might not be the best idea. Wait, am I the only person who commented on this video? So Max's first videos were around when YouTube was still an ugly place with bad cameras and a lot of optimistic youth. And then Max's next big video was Drunk History. If you've ever watched Max's much more famous Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, this is basically the little baby version of that. It's a video of Max while he's drunk describing the history of the Robin character or characters. And as he narrates, him and his friends reenact these famous comic book scenes. It looks like shit. But for 08, this is a pretty damn good video. And then Joker just owns the shit out of you with a crowbar. He says, Robin, I'm gonna own the shit out of you with this crowbar. Robin's like, please don't. Then, okay, let's see what else we got. We have some more shit posts. We got Tuesday, 11.47 p.m. <laughs> Now 
this is the best video I've ever seen. That also happens to be 37 seconds long. So after watching those, you might think Max is just a quality shit poster. And you'd be right, because every quality shit poster has a cat video. Oh my god, you guys. That was perfect. Following this, he has a lot of shit posts, and within these shit posts are these big analysis videos that are just kind of sewn in between them. Like him recalling Watchmen while he wakes up and going over a really good Batman comic while he's making food. But of course, him being the nerd who wrote a Superman comic, he had to do some videos on the guy. Max does the analysis video again, only now with actual quality cameras. He does the death and return of Superman, and it's considered an actual legitimate short film. It's great. Elijah Wood is in it. Elijah Wood is awesome, by the way. It's a great video. Another great video he made was regarding Clark, and it's almost a reaction to Man of Film from a passionate fan. This is the quality of which I want all vlogs to be. It's great, and to be honest, I'm not a fan of the soups, but hearing Max's perspective on it, he's not even a fan of Superman. He's a fan of Clark Kent, and reading his comic and watching these videos, I myself have developed a fondness for Superman, which I never thought I'd have. What's special about Superman is that his parents didn't fucking die. He's not a selfish, post-traumatic sissy who needed to have his parents shot to death in front of him to understand that maybe you should help people and that crime is wrong and murder is bad. Max's next big video was The Slap, which was a new take on the whole Strangers Kissing video that blew up years back. And yeah, this is a great idea and it achieves everything you think it would. It's as much a thoughtful art piece as it is some feel-good piece you would see scrolling through social media. That being said, I never would have thought while traversing this guy's back catalog, I'd find an old video I watched years ago. Can you be ready for that? Oh! A smaller video, but just as impactful, was his short film titled Jane LA. I don't want to ruin it, but it stars a guy falling for a crazy girl. And said crazy girl kind of is an egomaniac that nobody takes seriously. I would say that that they're being selfish and that and, and that they're closed minded and, and that they're not thinking about what, what I want to do. They don't understand what I want to do. It's a great piece, and the editing to this is also very similar to the video he directed for Ariana Grande. Speaking of that video, I love Max's videos that allow me to casually peer into the media world. He has a video on the set of that music video, and just kind of laying out how the video is going to be shot, and god damn it, I never thought I'd be so into two people walking around in the middle of nowhere on a set so intensely. Let's, let's have it in like this. Uh, and then they go to kiss. And static, static break. Does that look, what does that look like from there? And then finally, Max made Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, which, yeah, is one of my favorite videos on YouTube. Not just because it stars Sora and Joker and Josh, etc., but because as a wrestling fan, there's probably no better experience than a person giving an analysis that makes it seem like wrestling actually knows what it's doing half the time. And this format allows the telling of interesting, diverse, and compelling stories. And there is no better place to start than with probably my favorite wrestler, Triple H. And goddamn, there is a reason this is a legitimate short film, but at the same time, it's a YouTube video. There's product placement in the background where they're shooting. There's a random clip of the kid who likes turtles. It's just thrown in there. But at the same time, 
there's actual production here. As a person who enjoys analysis, I can appreciate a fun, stupid analysis video that is better than probably anything I'll ever make. A snob who had a chip on his shoulder that he could never let go and just wanted to be the best, but never could be that without cheating. Finally selling out to the point that if he can't be the champion, he'll choose the champion. And after Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, Max's channel really started to evolve from there. There wasn't bullshit home videos nearly as much, and there were vlogs coming out left and right. And the videos in between those were great too. His video where he gives his father an award, the speech during that video almost made me cry. Cool, uh, but I think I've talked long enough, and this jacket is way sweatier than I thought it would be up here. I wrote that, but actually it's quite comfortable. <laughs> so I think it's time I... <laughs> Thank you, you're being very generous to a very nervous guy. Carrying on, another fun experiment on Max's channel is a series called Girl Stories. They're essentially high quality vlogs featuring random women who are playing characters giving stories that reflect pretty deep stuff. Uh, sometimes it gets crazy, sometimes it's just fun, you get the idea. I'll just give an example of one which was about a girl who got drunk and she ended up getting a tattoo. And she woke up to find a feather on her arm that she really didn't want. And then when she went back to the tattoo shop, the guy was gone. And it turns out he had Alzheimer's and that was his last tattoo. He'd been, for whatever reason, trying to keep giving people this weird tattoo of a feather and he finally got to do it on this girl who was drunk. And so the video ends with her going in on how there's a little bit of poetic justice to the fact that on her arm is this guy's last tattoo and he finally got to do the tattoo he'd been trying to do for so long. It's a great series made on the cheap and Max proves you can make something that speaks and is rememberable but it doesn't have to be on the quality and production value as some of his bigger videos. And did I mention Max Landis can make good videos for very cheap? Let's talk about that. So when Max's movie Me, Him, Her came out, he did a little bit of a viral campaign. For $100, he made a bunch of videos, and they're all awesome. Uh, I think you would enjoy it. <laughs> Me, Him, Her, motherfuckers, it's finally coming out! It's good! You like it! It turns out a hundred dollars can pay for a kid huffing on a bag of chips. So this thing happened when I wrote the script where it was very surreal. It was almost like a Scott Pilgrim level of surrealness. But due to my budget and me being a first time director and also them being worried that a lot of that would confuse the audience, they made me cut it out. Don't you, don't you hate that? He's just breathing the chips. <laughs> uh, and uh, they, uh... He's just admiring the bag. <laughs> He's looking at it like it's a beautiful woman. He just, that, he has such a more meaningful relationship with this chip bag than I've ever had with another person. Those series of videos were great, but his best series is Cinema Psychos. This is a reaction series where the hosts react to shit such as trailers. They even reacted to that movie, Me, Him, Her, that I was talking about. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Um... But, uh, I don't know, I, this doesn't really look exactly like the kind of indie movie I usually see. Like, I loved uh, Revenant and, like, Room. 2015 was a really strong year. Um, I don't know, I, I just don't know if this is something like, I would go see in theaters, but I like, I like Chronicle a lot. Fucking so. overrated. Overrated. No, it was, uh, Chronicle was pretty dope. Chronicle, so Chronicle is overrated as fuck. Anyway, the videos I haven't covered so far, most of them are short-form vlogs and with very direct points. I am a big fan of those type of videos as a person who's done them myself. I love that kind of content. I think for a regular pace with low minimal production, that's the best content that I can receive. Today, Max's content mostly consists of these vlogs and the occasional girl story. 
thrown in the mix. And with my Creator on the Rise series, I really want to try to end these videos saying why you should subscribe to said person, why are they interesting, and I'll do that by explaining why I'm sub to Max's channel. One, he is a burst of personality and energy, and after going through his catalog, I've seen him grow as fast as he changes haircuts. His look into the film world has given me a new perspective, especially on the screenwriting process. Sure, he has strong opinions, but outspoken voices are what make YouTube such a fun place, especially the ones with strong worth ethic and personality, which Max has got in the bag. A lot of people don't like him, and I think a big part of that is he is obnoxious and loud. That's not exactly a secret to anyone, but I subscribe to guys who I find interesting. And the most interesting thing I could find in most people is passion. And Max Landis is a passionate guy. So I'm gonna close this video out guys with the most fitting and possible. With the Backstreet Boys. Hey guys, Soul here, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching the first ever episode of Creator on the Rise, and if you have a favorite YouTuber, then you are free to make suggestions on who I cover in future episodes. If you are a creator yourself, you're free to suggest yourself. Uh, also guys, this is a new channel I have just recently launched, and I am looking for all the support I can get. I'm trying to take On The Rise to the next level, so if you guys could subscribe, like the video, all that kind of stuff, I would deeply appreciate it. I will also have some annotations coming up here in a second, uh, saying just some videos uh, that you could watch, if that's something you'd be interested in. Anyway guys, on this channel we celebrate YouTube, we discuss YouTube, if that's something you would be interested in, again, I would really appreciate a subscription, and you can also suggest some future topics down below. Anyway, thank you so much as always, and with that, I leave you.